as we have unexpected drama between Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, we have unexpected calm between Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. Brian Gutekunst, the general manager of the team, had a press conference last week, met with reporters on Tuesday. He said not one general manager has asked what the price would be for an Aaron Rodgers trade. Now, that hardly means there's no interest. I just think the time is not yet ripe. Right. Right. Until we know what Aaron Rodgers is going to do, there's no reason to waste your time finding out hypothetically what Brian Gutekunst may want. Because what he would want now, if he's trading Aaron Rodgers without Rodgers saying, hey, trade me, is going to be a lot more than when he's pressed into a corner by Rodgers saying, hey, I want you to trade me. So until we know what Rodgers is going to do, I just think that's meaningless. Uh, agreed. I agreed. Th- this is one of those situations, Mike. We know how the donuts are made here or behind the curtain. This is teams don't call about Rodgers. This is a situation where, again, a little not like it's Brady, but this is a the second biggest star in football. You know, one of the biggest stars we've seen in football over the last 10 years, certainly Aaron Rodgers. Th- this is a situation where he calls the team. They call the team. He lets you know we're interested, and then they start to come up with a trade package. People aren't going to call Green Bay and go and like start a, a bidding war right now. This is a, it's in Rogers' ca- you know camp and his on his plate right now as far as what to do. So we haven't heard a decision there. And then if he decides he doesn't want to come to Green Bay, okay, that's going to happen. He's probably going to tell them a list of teams that he's interested in, right? And now he's also, why he's letting Green Bay know, his agent's letting those teams that he's interested in know, and there's when the conversations strike up, and now they call the Green Bay Packers to go, okay, let's see if we can make a deal. But there's no, like, to your point, there's no reason for right now, for the, from the call right now. And, yeah, that's a kind of a, a cherry-picked headline right there where people are kind of jumping off on it right now. And, and I also think that, And this isn't a criticism of Brian Gutekunst. I just think it's an acknowledgement of the sensitivity of the situation. He's got a time bomb. And you have to take tweezers to it, not dull chopsticks. You have to be very, very careful in how you go about dismantling this thing. And you can say something like you did last week. Oh, I've never promised that he's going to be traded. Things like that can inflame a situation where it feels like the two sides are coming together. And this is a comment that Aaron Rodgers may see and misinterpret or just interpret the right way. I don't know what messages Goody Kuntz is trying to send to Aaron Rodgers. But at a time when it feels like the plane is landing slowly for Rodgers to stay in Green Bay, this is the kind of thing that may get the, the pilot to pull the stick a little bit and, uh, and maybe circle the airport one more time. Uh, at a time when we're expecting something, we are two weeks away right now from the start of the 2022 league year. And Rodgers has said repeatedly he's going to make his intentions known before free agency begins. It kind of begins 12 days from now when the legal tampering window opens, but the contracts can be signed. The trades can be made two weeks from today. So I I expect something from him this week. I think if we don't get something from him by Close the business on Friday, or who knows when he's going to make an announcement. I guess there's a 24-hour news cycle now. He can tweet whenever he wants, whatever he wants, however he wants. I just think if we get to Monday morning and we haven't heard from him, we're getting a little close to the end, and we're getting beyond where we thought we were going to be from the Aaron Rodgers timeline. So it feels to me like he's going to end up staying put, even though for a long time I thought he was going to be leaving. They're, They're doing everything they can to make it attractive to him in Green Bay, and it is more attractive there than any other team right now. It's certainly up there. I mean, we know that. They're still a really good football team. They've said and done all the right things to kind of put the pressure on Rodgers to where it's going to make him look like, you know, he's not going to get away with, like, looking like, hey, they messed up, they did did me wrong. They've done everything right right here. They've, they've cornered him into a fact where if he wants to get out of there, he's going to have to be the bad guy. And, you know, a little bit like Brady, Rodgers doesn't like to be the bad guy. I mean, he doesn't. I mean, you, you know that. We know that. We talk about that all the time. He's a little different that way. And that's where I do question, like, does he just have – does he have the guts to make that decision? And I, I don't mean that like in a disrespectful way. It's a tough decision to make. I get that. It's not easy to go, wait, I've been the king of this castle for this long – 
and now I'm going to go try to be the king of another castle and learn all those people in there, and, and, you know, hopefully we can get on the same page about, you know, the playbook and all that type of stuff. That's a huge life adjustment, especially when you are the man in one place, and whatever you say kind of goes, as we've talked about in Green Bay. That's just the way it's set up. Brett Favre is king. They, he gave the throne to Aaron Rodgers. He's the king. They kind of run the organization, and that's where I still – I guess I still feel like it's 50-50. I do. And especially, you know, I think when you tie in some of the things, again, you hear from uh, the GM from the Broncos yesterday, and the fact that Nathaniel Hackett in Denver can be a guy that can maybe massage that move a little bit and make him feel like, hey, it's still home. It's a little different a castle, but, you know, we, we know that, you know, and we know that other castle, and everything's good here too. That, to me, where I still give it an outside chance, I do. Uh, but I, I guess I, I'm with you in the fact of I don't know if he could actually pull the trigger and make this move. That's something I got to see. I just think back to Brady two years ago, Stafford yeah. last year. It – both guys were leaving situations where the team with them was not going to be a Super Bowl contender. Yes. Jumping to teams that right. instantly became Super Bowl contenders and ultimately Super Bowl winners. I just I don't know where that spot is in the AFC. There are a couple in the NFC. San Francisco doesn't have the trade assets at this point to get Aaron Rodgers because of the Trey Lance trade last year. And the Buccaneers... Right may not be a team that, number one, Rodgers would want to play for because why do you want to follow in the footsteps of Tom Brady? And number two, the Packers may want to not trade him to any team in the NFC. And the AFC is so competitive right now. And, and look, I get the theory that, hey, he's not going to shy away from competition. Bring it on. That's what Travis Kelsey said at the Super Bowl, the idea of Aaron Rodgers coming to Denver. Bring it on. Let's do it. Maybe that's right, his attitude. Right. I, I want to jump into – a, a hotter kitchen. I'm sick of playing in this division where we're much better than every other team in there. And I have to get myself into the right frame of mind because it just doesn't naturally happen. We have no real rivals in our division. That's no fun. I want to deal with Patrick Mahomes twice a year. I want to deal with Justin Herbert twice a year. I want to deal with Derek Carr twice a year. He may relish that opportunity, not say, well, that's going to make it harder for me to get to a Super Bowl. And I, he's probably more yeah. wired to be the former, to say, I want to go in there and mix it up with these guys and show that I'm better than them. I'm the old man, and I'm better than all three of them. I, I, I you know, again, I, I mean, he shouldn't back down or let those things, I think, be a determining factor. That's what, I mean, again, this guy that followed Brett Favre, I mean, that's one of the most pressure-packed situations you could ever be in. He handled it, you know, in, in flying colors. He, of course, was unbelievable and brought them to a Super Bowl three years after Favre left, and that was amazing. And he was, of course, already the best player in football. So he's dealt with that type of pressure before. He has. Um, you know, I I look at the, the Green Bay situation with them. You know, we've, we've heard, you know, hey, they'll give them more money. The Bakhtiari thing. What's what's going on with that situation? Restructuring contracts, right? You know, if I'm Rodgers, I'm I'm gonna wait to the last possible second to just get a feel for what direction the team's going to, though. You know that that is one thing for sure. You know, yeah, they're a, they're a really good football team. We know that, but you know, hey, what is gonna happen with Devontae Adams? What is gonna happen with some of the guys on the defense that we've heard about that are you know on the fence of whether they're gonna be back? They have the salary cap issues, all of those type of things. I'd want to get a real, as clear a picture as I can, you know, to get a feel for what kind of team I'm going to have with me in Green Bay here and go from there. And, and then you go. And then maybe you can evaluate, okay, wait here. This is where I kind of think the Packers will look like. Okay, this is – I got a kind of a feel for what, you know, the Broncos might look like or another team that fancies him, whatever you want to say there. And then you try to make your decision. And that's why if I was him, I would wait to the last possible second just to see how Gutenkust and company kind of organize things here with the salary cap and the team going forward. By the way, I got a complaint via email from someone who didn't like the fact that we spent the first 20 minutes of the program talking about Tom Brady. Probably doesn't like the fact that we spent the next minute – 10 minutes talking about Aaron Rodgers because the well, combine starts today. Well, I don't know what they yeah. want us to say about the combine right out of the gates, especially when some fairly significant stuff was said yesterday about the greatest player of all time who supposedly retired and clearly isn't and is trying to get his way out of Tampa Bay and Bruce Aarons is trying to just slam the door and keep him from leaving. I tend to think that's a pretty significant topic for us to discuss, regardless of well, what we else is going seen... on in the NFL. We haven't seen a combine player yet first. So tell that emailer yes. Chris Sims said shut up and email yes. somebody else, all right? <laughs> now, that was 
The that other was, thing that I was wanna, my, I my response was my response was what do yeah. you want us to talk about with, about the combine? Nothing's happened yet. I, and there's nothing that's going on yet. When we're going to play some interviews from coaches yesterday, and we did that, so that's coming up. So you know, you know, buckle your seatbelt there, buddy. Uh, but hey, here's one other thing too that uh, I've thought about a little bit. You know, Rodgers, we know the Tampa Bay thing, but uh, Tampa Bay and, you know, the, the possibility, it seems scary, all of that. And, yes, I doubt that Green Bay would ever trade him there. But one thing I do think about, like, if you're Aaron Rodgers, if you wanted to, like, silence critics sometimes, like, don't be afraid of Tampa Bay. Man, what if what if he ever would, did go down there and just kick butt and they won a Super Bowl? That'd go a long way for his legacy, too. It really would. Now, I don't think it's going to happen because Green Bay, like we've talked about, is not going to trade in the NFC. But I have thought about that. And it kind of speaks again to, you know, you can't be scared to make your decision all on the optics. I mean, Brady had the guts to go to Tampa. Tampa hadn't really done anything. And it was, whoa, wait, Drew Brees and Sean Payton are in the division. This is going to be tough. So, you know, it comes to the AFC West. You know, again, don't be scared of that if it came down to Denver. Don't be worried about Herbert, Mahomes, Derek Carr. Yeah, you're as good as them right now, certainly. And, you know, you go with the team that you think can set you up best to succeed to the top of your level, of your highest level of play, and you see where it goes from there. I hope he's not going to be too, um, you know, what do I want to say, affected by these these circumstances or the optics or the pressure of the politics of football and everything that goes on around that. I just really sense that it's working its way toward him staying put. There's been, you it know, seems the, like it's slowed the, down. Yeah, we just yeah. yeah, we saw we saw the Instagram post last Monday night, which was yeah. capped with a photo of Randall Cobb and Devontae Adams standing at the national anthem before the game against the Chiefs, where Rodgers wasn't there. So there was an empty spot between them. And I thought that was a pretty clear message. He's leaving Green Bay. And then the next day, he said on McAfee's show, I'm having some great conversations. And the the report that there's there's negotiations happening between the Packers and Rodgers agents about a short-term deal, to me, I think, is the indication that that he's leaning towards staying put, but we'll see, you know, yeah. maybe he's just trolling right. everyone. Maybe he wants it to have maximum drama. Maybe he wants us all to think he's staying. And then we're going to get the, the sudden reveal of his intention to go play for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers or some other team. So we'll see how that goes. You- Hi, I'm Mike Tirico and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC sports.